Social Studies, Chapter 16, Raising America's Spirits. In early British victory, things went badly for the Continental Army during the early part of the war. Hardly th three months after Americans celebrated the Declaration of Independence, a large British army assembled in New York City to do battle with Washington's still untrained army. The British defeated the Continental Army easily. It almost trapped them. That might have ended the war then and there. Led by Washington, however, some of the American forces escaped. It was during that battle for New York City that a 24-year-old Connecticut school teacher named Nathan Hale became famous. Hale was caught serving as a spy for the Americans and was hanged by the British. His last words were, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. His words inspired the patriots. His words are still quoted today. Nathan Hale was executed by the British for spying for the Americans. After the Continental Army's narrow escape from New York, the Americans retreated across New Jersey and into Pennsylvania. The British stayed close behind. Luckily, it was getting late in the year. Winter was a hard time to fight battles. The British were satisfied to take control of New York and New Jersey and settle in for the winter. They could finish off the Americans in the spring. It was at this moment that Washington's leadership began to pay off. Other generals might have panicked after such a setback, but not Washington. Whether he won a battle or lost, he remained steady. Soldiers admired him and were willing to follow him into battle. <coughs> battle, however, was not what Washington wanted. He knew his untrained troops were no match for the experienced British army, head on in a battle. Washington's plan for winning the war required patience. Instead of taking on the British directly, Washington's strategy was like Thomas Paine's checkerboard. He would keep the Continental Army moving. They would stop and fight the British now and then, but they would not get into a major battle. This way, Washington could buy time to build and train his army. Washington's plan meant that the Continental Army would not win many battles. They wouldn't lose many battles either. Meanwhile, as the war went on, the British people might tire of paying for it. After a few big American victories, who knew? Maybe the British would stop supporting the war altogether. A surprise attack. Washington realized that the American people could tire of the war too. So could his army. If it kept suffering defeats... Washington needed a quick victory or two to raise the spirits of his soldiers and of the rest of the nation. Washington planned a surprise attack on British mercenaries, the soldiers the British hired from other countries. The mercenaries were called Hessians because many came from the German state of Hesse. The Hessians were camped in Trenton, New Jersey, just across the Delaware River from Pennsylvania. Washington planned to take the Hessians by surprise. After all, who would suspect the Continental Army to row across the ice-filled Delaware River in the dead of winter? On Christmas night, 1776, shivering American soldiers stepped into the rowboats that would carry them across the river. By 4 o'clock in the morning, all 2,400 of Washington's men were on the New Jersey side of the river. The Continental Army marched the nine miles to Trenton, hidden by the darkness of night. As day broke, they attacked the sleeping Hessians. Caught off guard, the Hessians were surprised and confused. After a very short fight, 900 Hessians surrendered. The Continental Army captured not only the enemy soldiers, but also their weapons and supplies. Eight days later, Washington won another victory. Again, he used the element of surprise, this time to defeat British soldiers in Princeton, New Jersey. Just as Washington hoped, the victories at Trenton and Princeton raised American spirits, especially for the men fighting in the Continental Army. <laughs>